All right, so on this video, uh, Maki and I had talked about um, kind of doing a full breakdown of how we outfitted this boat uh, inside and outside. Many of you have asked questions or emailed and reached out to us saying that you and your families are hoping to do something similar. Um, many of you just want to go boating as a couple. Um, some of you want to circumnavigate and all of those are fantastic. And we want to be able to pass on um, in as much detail uh, as possible, share what we've learned, uh, what are the systems uh, and options that we put on this boat and why, what were the costs associated with that. All of these things, um, are, it's a lot of decision making. It all matters. It, it really boils down to how you're going to use the boat. Are you going to stay coastal sailing? You know, we're, we're sitting here in the beautiful Chesapeake Bay. Um, are you going to sail in the Chesapeake? Are you going to sail the East Coast? Are you going all the way down to the Caribbean? Um, so it depends on where you, where you, how you plan to use the boat. We plan to do some blue water sailing, which is more offshore, long, longer passages. So we need to be self-sustained. That's why we have solar or the water maker, things like that. But you may not need that. Um, and so we want to go through and, and share how we set this boat up and, and why. Um, and hopefully you could take away some good information of what would be the decisions you would make for your own family, for your own boat. Um, so we'll start with this video. This is all going to be everything on the outside. The following video will be everything on the inside. So get a comfy little seat and a bucket of popcorn and let's go. Oh yes, oh, can I have a coffee with some cream please? Coffee with cream and a couple snacky snacks. Uh, <laughs> confirmed, uh, floating snacks. How long it's gonna take? Your order will be delivered in less than five minutes. Floating chef's kitchen, over and out. You can't say over and out. Outfitting the boat. This is, an, is not a factory thing, but in, just in uh, outfitting the boat, um, we uh, added the dinghy. Um, we bought the Highfield 340. We love this dinghy. Um, the Highfield uh, dinghies are uh, really, really well made. Good, high quality materials. Um, the 340 is around 11 feet, two-ish inches or 10 inches, somewhere in that in ballpark. I know everybody in general says get the biggest dinghy you can fit on your boat. We probably could have squeezed 360, which I know um, other Leopard 45 owners have done. We opted for, this is the 2020 uh, CL340, and I believe it actually um, went up just a little bit in size. Um, the really cool thing is, uh, I don't know if Maki can get over here. This is, uh, I think it's called a, a bullfront nose or whatever. It's a, uh, a flat nose to it, so it's not a, a, it's not a pointy, uh, bow on on this. This is really great because when we come up to the boat, not so much the docks and marinas, but definitely to the back of the boat, you can come straight in and this goes flush to the transom steps. It makes it really easy to, to get off get off the, the boat. Um, it has a uh, inflated top side. It has a um, hard bottom here. There are multiple connection points. So either for haul outs or we could put uh, multiple painters on here, uh, which are these ropes. Um, and that will, there's always the concern when your dinghy is in the water or tied up somewhere that the line could break and then it floats away and that would be a really <laughs> sad day. So um, I usually have two lines on here anytime we go anywhere. Uh, then the other great things on this vessel is um, it comes with the this, this single bench. We um, opted for an additional bench so it gives us a little more seating room. 
We also have this canopy uh, that comes up for some sun protection, which is fantastic. You would think, oh, well, I don't know, we don't really need it. But you know what, you're out on the dinghy, you are getting roasted by the sun. Um, so this uh, little pop-up um, bimini is uh, it's a great addition. Uh, the engine that we have on here is a four-stroke uh, Yamaha outboard, 25 horsepower outboard. Uh, and we added this thing called, I keep calling it a whale tail, but I think they call it a dolphin tail. Uh, it's this, the reason you, I, I can't recommend this enough. This allows the boat to plane up a lot faster. So when you give it throttle and you want to get going, it allows the boat, it, it forces the water down and it pitches the, the front of the boat up, which gets you planed out and moving a lot faster. So it's a far more enjoyable ride and it's way more fuel efficient than the poor, poor boat pushing a pile of water. One thing that we opted for, this is both an electric and pull start. Um, I think there's a great benefit to that. Um, a lot of people only get the electric starts and there is a, a beautiful uh, convenience to just simply pushing the button and the outboard starts. However, if the battery went dead, you're a little bit uh, screwed. So the ability to uh, do a pull start and start it is, uh, is fantastic. And this one, I forgot the, the wording or the technology behind it but it's not like the older lawnmower things where you really gotta rip your arm out to try to get this thing started. It actually, as you pull on it, it almost kicks it out a little bit and uh, it's super simple. Um, any, the kids could start, start this thing by, uh, with the pull start. Um, the other thing that we uh, added on here, and I gotta give credit to our friend Chris, uh, this is more of a security thing. Uh, this uh, bolts this uh, outboard down so it cannot be removed um, or that's a nice way of saying stolen. Um, so you want to have something like like this that that keeps the uh, the outboard bolted to the uh, to the dinghy. And then um, anytime we go to shore, we have a very long um, uh, coated rubber coated braided steel line, uh, and I, I that's how I lock it up when we go to marinas. Now, Okay, so one thing that uh, we did not opt from the factory, but we did aftermarket in Fort Lauderdale after the boat arrived, were all the exterior cushions. So um, we did that for two main reasons. One, um, a bit of a cost savings by doing it in Fort Lauderdale. And two, we were able to pick whatever materials uh, and colors, things of that nature that we wanted. So a company in Fort Lauderdale uh, by the name of Creative Canvas uh, made these for us. This is a umbrella material. We opted to go with um, this kind of a vinyl material because we feel it's easier to clean up um, versus the um, actual cloth type material. Um, we worried more about uh, oils and, and salt water and sunscreen and things of that nature that could soak in. Um, not that you don't have to worry about sunscreen on these, you definitely do want to uh, be careful about that. But um, these are three inch thick. Um, we uh, opted for the, uh, a, more of a firm foam that's inside. This is also, I don't know if it's technically called marine foam, but the foam that's in here does not retain moisture at all. Um, and I'll see if, I don't know if we're able to find a piece, and, and, but if you were to pour water uh, onto it, it doesn't absorb like a sponge. It literally just flows right through it. So these things stay dry all the time, even if they were to get wet from rain or to have fallen in the ocean. The one thing to always remember, these are attached with little snaps. I'll take these off so you can see. So these guys, they just snap in place onto these little connection points that are installed here. Definitely don't get lazy and just toss these back on and walk away because mother nature, between the boat getting rocked around or a good gust of wind, and this will just fly off into the ocean. And if you are underway, of course, you won't know until you've gotten to your destination and your cushion's gone. So um, definitely snap them into place to make sure that they are secure. Yeah. Can we take a little break? I think I'm doing my union break. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little snack. Just a little sustenance to get me through. This is a lot of hard work and it doesn't <laughs> seem like it, but okay, let's move on. This 
is the Davit system from Leopard. I, this is, it's phenomenal. This thing is, it's like its own built-in crane. We love the way this works. Um, the one thing that we did want to point out is that um, obviously it comes with the davit so that it can lower down your dinghy. However, it does not come with the bridle. And so we had this bridle made by Just Catamarans. It's a two-point uh, system. So right now it's uh, clipped in at the high setting, which is why you see the, uh, the dinghy is up. And if Maki backs up here, you can see um, this, this is the position that the dinghy would be in for, um, well, pretty much any time we're doing uh, moving the boat. Uh, you never know what kind of seas or conditions you're going to come into or some rogue wave. So this is always set up high. Uh, it's clear of any water activity while we're sailing. We're able to actually um, lock this down so it's not rocking side to side or, or back and forth. So this thing's really secure while we're uh, traveling. Usually when we're at anchorage, then there is a second uh, point on the bridle, which is this one. And so then we would use this and clip in, and this lowers the entire dinghy down to a much lower setting, which makes it a lot faster and easier to put it in the water. So anyway, we love it. All right, so one of the other options that we had to put on, and this is from the factory, are these uh, synthetic teak floors. Um, they're, this is obviously not a must, it is not a safety feature, but it does give the boat a, a more upscale look. This is the weathered teak. Uh, they have about four, I believe, four different color options. So we went with this weathered teak. It's a little lighter with the white uh, caulking look to it. Um, it does get a little warm, so um, we hose it off every so often if we're standing back here. And we have it uh, all throughout the uh, transom steps the aft cockpit area, the helm, and also the forward cockpit. Um, those are the areas. You can opt to have it added um, in your uh, in the heads down in the bathroom so they can put it down there. We did not opt to do that. And again, it just gives it a, a more upscaled look. the other uh, options that we, we opted to get from the factory were these sunshades. Um, you see all these gray uh, snapped in enclosures. They go around on the sides, the sides over here on both sides uh, on port and starboard. They're snapped into place. Uh, if you didn't have enclosures, what ends up happening is these are large canvas roll downs and they come down and they snap to the outer railings and it kind of it's a, a little bit of an arched uh, panel that keeps the sun out. Um, we don't use them that way because we have the enclosure here. However, we still do use them. Uh, we have had the sun still coming through here and even with the 70% uh, diffusing screens, it gets hot in here. So we'll roll these down um, and it just sits in place and it gives you a ton of privacy and it blocks all the sun. This panel in particular, and we'll show it, uh, we actually use this as a movie screen. We have a little nebula uh, movie projector, so we have movie night out here, and this ends up being the absolute pervy, perfect movie screen. So there's panels like that on both sides. There's another one over here, again. These do help diffuse the sun, but they also give you a great amount of privacy. So let me show you what these look like. Mikey, I don't know if you want to go there okay i'll keep going backwards hopefully i'm not going to go into the water yeah, back 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 splash <laughs> all right so you'll see how quickly these guys yeah, go in awesome. these things are fantastic this this whole thing goes in very quickly the thing that's awesome about this is that not only does it give you uh, protection from the sun but when you are in a crowded anchorage it gives you a nice amount mm -hmm. of privacy too without completely blocking Yeah, so you can still see everybody. And if you come come up here, and now you look aft, you see how it's just a much more private uh, backdrop here. Mm -hmm. So, all right, enclosures. This is a bigger topic just because it is very, very custom. Uh, we actually only learned this uh, having gone through the process now ourselves. You would think that 
there's Leopard 45s or Leopard 50 or whatever boat you have, and you would think, well, they must have a, just a template. I, I need to enclose the aft cockpit and the helm uh, and just go ahead and do it. It turns out that there is no template because everybody uh, makes it very, very, it's a very personal decision. It's very specific, again, to how you're going to use the boat. Um, a good, uh, a good example of that will be even just this little area right here. So this is all really tied into the helm enclosure, which uh, encapsulates everything up at the helm where we drive the boat. It goes around this area here. This hatch goes downstairs. Uh, we have a, a, the owner's version of the Leopard 45, so that means the starboard hull is all the, the owner's suite, if you will call it that. So this is right above the bed uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the cabin downstairs. We opted to have this custom made this way so that the enclosure wraps around this um, and it's set this way for a variety of reasons. There's a solid panel down here uh, because it actually gives a little more shade instead of going with the clear glass all the way down below. It also encloses this so that when there is rain or, or inclement weather you won't be sitting or trying to sleep downstairs with the sound of rain or drops you know banging on the uh, tapping on the window here. So this, this hatch can actually stay open all the time. It never gets wet. Um, it allows for good airflow. Um, so that was our, our uh, reasoning behind having this installed this way. We opted in the aft cockpit here, we opted not to enclose the entire thing. Now, again, this is a very personal decision. It also boils down to where are you going to take the boat? You might be in the Pacific Northwest where it gets colder and you do want to enclose it. Um, we are predominantly going to be Eastern US, the Caribbean, hopefully warmer climates. So we thought that we would just do the two sides, the port and starboard side. We can always add this back enclosure. And uh, I think our suggestion to people would be, if you're unsure, then just do it some, something along these lines. The reason that you really do want to you, uh, have enclosures on both sides, as the boat is moving, you will have ocean spray uh, that comes off the port bow. It will spray down the side of the boat here. This is a fairly big ledge here. The water will, will um, kind of gather here and waterfall into this whole cockpit. Also, the ocean spray will come in when, there, when it is raining and the rain is blowing sideways. It, this entire area will be wet. We broke this up uh, for, for two reasons. To have a little flexibility so that if we did want to open this section up, we can unzip this one panel, and this still gives us the weather protection for the aft cockpit area. The other thing that we've also done is in addition to the clear glass, we've had 70% uh, screening put on here as well. So let me show you how this is, this is on here. So these obviously come off very easily. It's now clear glass. We can roll these screens up and snap them in place we can uh, have them completely down and diffuse uh, light. It gives you a fair amount of privacy, especially during the day. Um, but it's just, it's a really nice option to still be able to see out. And again, it boils down to, it, it, you come down to this thing of uh, keeping the boat cool, staying out of the sun. You don't wanna always constantly be in the sun. So this gives you uh, some privacy. It gives you, it diffuses the, the uh, sunlight. So. Uh, and I don't know, I've never actually thought about it, but um, you know, limiting the amount of sunlight uh, will probably limit the amount of UV damage on your, um, on your boat cushions as well. So you see the, uh, the setup that we have here on the opposite side. That um, again has an enclosure that comes all the way to the, the back edge there of the uh, aft cockpit seating area. It wraps around this hatch that again goes down to the downstairs um, owner's uh, cabin. And then if we come up here, this is the helm enclosure. Now, the helm enclosure and the 60-40 split on the port side are the two things that completely keep the aft cockpit uh, dry. So again, this is a very personal um, option of, of how you have this designed. These things are called smiley, smiley windows, these little or U-shaped windows. It gives you the flexibility to, instead of taking out the entire panel, 
you can open just this and you roll this up and it stays up. Um, to be honest, anytime we are underway, we unzip this entire door panel, the entire panel rolls up and snaps into place and that stays here. The one part that I really do love about having it here always is that even when this door is fully ro rolled up, which gives me immediate access to anything that may be happening out here on the deck, if there's uh, a squall that comes through and just starts dropping a ton of water, it's very easy to quickly drop this and zip it up and you stay dry. Um, again, on the back of the, uh, of the helm enclosure here, we have smiley windows, so if we wanted airflow from all four sides, we can open it up. Uh, we have screening, 70% screening again on the back here so that when we are sailing uh, and the sun is behind us instead of, uh, and, and this helps us kind of keep from burning the back of our neck and shoulders um, and keeps this, this space a little cooler. The uh, one other thing that we did, Leopard um, has this fantastic uh, bimini, this hard top. This is a, a, a hard top bimini. They have this really cool skylight that allows you to see all the way up, you know, to see the uh, the sails, to see uh, the mast. Uh, we find that uh, at some point throughout the course of the day, depending on the position of the sun, we're always sitting here at the helm, kind of standing from one side to the other, trying to stand uh, out of the sun again. So again, we had this 70% screening made um, through Creative Canvas, and we just snap this in place and it diffuses the sun. So I could still see through and I could still see the helm, the sails, but it, it really diffuses the sunlight, so it really keeps things a lot cooler here. So I think that's uh, it. Would you do anything differently with this enclosure? Would you? Uh... Um, the only thing that I would ask to have done, of, and it's just a slight adjustment, is that when this gets rolled up, or or the uh, here I could show you real quickly with the panel here. So these are the snaps. Uh, I apologize in advance if this gets windy and there's wind noise, but if you undo this, all right, and then we roll this guy up. So, well, hey, let's, and then don't snap it in place. Oh, so, okay. um, when you snap it in place, this is pretty much the position it's in. Now, I would say it's a tiny bit uh, in my view. Now, it's not bad at all, um, and we've now become very accustomed to it, but I think um, if there would be a way, I would almost rather have the, the snaps on the outside and instead have this come up here, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a way to do that or if there's a way to somehow get this to snap up here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is, but um, it, that's a, it's a minor thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you could do it here too, because when we roll up this panel, um, it's a bigger roll, but uh, we have plenty to actually snap it on the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maki, it's your turn to talk about the uh, aft cockpit uh, refrigerator. Whoa, what is going on here? Hey, did you bring me my tea? Tea? You said you wanted to talk about the aft cockpit refrigerator. Oh, that's right. Can you do it? Seriously? Do I have to do everything around here? You lost <laughs> one of your green eyes. <laughs> perfect size for a small uh, cold beverages or any smaller items that it doesn't fit in the, the main fridge. Uh, it's a great option. Uh, we highly recommend it because um, instead of this, it would be just another storage and you always need more refrigeration. For that reason, uh, we can't imagine a boat without it. Uh, it also has um, a small compartment for the freezer where you can store anything from ice creams or any other low desserts. So that also it's it's a bonus. Next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
So at the helm, uh, the things that we optioned here is this is the MFD or the multifunction display screen. It is the, the, standards, uh, the standard one from the factory is nine inch. We upgraded to the 12 inch, mainly because this larger screen obviously is larger and you see more, but there's more, um, I think personally, I think more flexibility in it. Um, the actual software will still be the same, but because, so let's just, if you go to the single chart, this won't be, the, there's no difference necessarily between the nine and 12 inch other than this is a little bit bigger. But when you start getting into wanting to do multi, kind of multitasking things, you could split the screen a variety of different ways. So this one still gives me the map, the, uh, the nautical map of where we are, where we're going, it tracks all that stuff. This gives me rolling data. So this will give me the ETA, crosswinds, are we having any current uh, at our side beam or at our trend, at, at, on the back? Uh, pushing us along. Uh, there is another split screen for the, the uh, combo. There's also a radar one. So this one splits the screen for two different um, maps, same nautical maps. And the, the beauty of this one is that you can get a kind of, let's just say a closer zoomed in version. The closer you get, you get more depth. And then this one, I could, I could bring in a little bit or or pull out so this will give you two different views this one is pulled back so i get a little more of a global view of where we are and where we're tracking to it would have to be a little closer than that but something like that so i could see the path that we're tracking out and this one gives me closer in depth um, so again the larger the uh, this is the axiom 12 uh, gives us a little more flexibility there you can also do it with the radar uh, well when we talk about radar that's another um uh, option we have the uh, HD color radar that we opted to have put on board. We have used that um, a lot, um, mainly during our night sails because there will be things that will show up um, as far as ships or uh, items that are with AIS and things. Well, you'll actually be able to see some of these. It'll pick up markers. The sensitivity on this is is pretty high. You could adjust the gain so it is more sensitive of what it sees and, and reflects. But um, the color radar has been a huge safety tool, I would say, um, both day and night. During the day, when we see clouds off in the distance and we're thinking, oh, okay, is that squall headed our way? You can actually just fire up the, uh, the radar and you can see the squall coming, working its way. You can, we are positioned in the middle here, so you would see, oh, it's tracking ahead of us. You could change the, the range on these rings so it's a one mile distance between rings or three mile or six mile. And so you can actually see the storm either passing you or going behind you, or you know it's gonna hit right on. So um, during the day, it's great for that. At night, it's phenomenal because it is literally your eyes. There could be fishing boats or vessels or something that's out in the water that isn't lit up and this would see it. So it gives us a preview of, of what's ahead of us. So anyway, the MFD has been fantastic. Uh, these two i70, these are these smaller displays and screens. This is for the autopilot. So there's a variety, many different ways you can have autopilot uh, set to a, a specific course, a waypoint. You can have it as wind vane, so it's keeping the boat on a specific tack. In other words, the wind is coming from the beam. You don't want to uh, move off of a 60 degree angle, so it will keep the boat in, your, in that general direction at a 60 degree angle. Um, and then the one below it here is for wind direction, wind speed, depth, and our actual speed uh, in water. One thing we opted, and it doesn't have its own screen here, but we do have full uh, AI AIS, which is the automated information system uh, on board. And that allows us to see other boats. For example, here, you can see it right now. So there's a boat right here. You can see this little triangle right here, the little green guy, right? So if I touch this, that AIS target is a vessel by the name of RV Bay Hydro 2. If I want to see what's going on with this boat, uh, the type of boat isn't put in here, but it does it does tell you their speed over ground. So they're traveling at 1.2 knots. Uh, they're relatively close to us. It's a 56, uh, 56 feet in length, 23 feet wide. It doesn't give us the draft. AIS, uh, we opted to get aftermarket. Right here. Yes, this is us right here, and we've center us on the screen. So we're right here, we're the icon, catamaran icon. So we opted to get AIS um, for one main reason, aftermarket. The AIS unit itself comes from Raymarine, so there's no difference there. And there, I don't think there's any actual cost savings from having just catamarans installed versus having it done at the factory. The big difference was that we got a, um, a much higher quality antenna, which runs all the way up the mast. 
Um, and so that gives us um, a better um, locking in GPS and a greater range um, on that system. Um, all this electronics is, uh, is, well, it's necessary. Obviously, uh, this is a, a slightly upgraded package because of things like the radar and autopilot. Uh, you do not want to be hand, st hand steering and, and sailing by hand uh, at the helm. I would say it's fun for a little while <laughs> uh, and more day sailing. Uh, and you get a little more feel of the boat and you're really tuning and, and uh, working on the sails. On longer passages, when you're, you set a course to a specific destination, you want to be as proficient uh, so that you get there at a decent time. You might, be, uh, you might, might want to get there at 10 o'clock in the morning, not 10 o'clock at night, you might be trying to outrun a weather system that so you can't go uh, that slow. So the, all these things help you kind of tune the boat so that it can go um, to from point A to point B as proficiently as possible. I think that's it here at the helm. option that we added uh, is the Fusion Marine radio system. Um, it's a great, it's a great system. Uh, it comes with uh, three zones: um, the the back, the aft, the salon, and the front cockpit. So we we got two zones, but you can get three zones. And what's really great about it that you can adjust the volume. You can also turn off one of the zones and only have the music is uh, uh, in another zone. So it works really easy and it's. It's a great sound. Um, music, music is a it's a big deal to us. And uh, we, when we were thinking about all these different music options and downloading and having different music, um, it just needed to be something simple, something that you can push the button, switch the channels that you wanted to listen. And for that reason, we uh, picked um, Sirius XM radio marine package. Uh, we just added uh, the outside antenna, and we we love it. One of the other factory options that we added were these Raymarine cameras. There's one here in the aft cockpit, there's one in the forward cockpit. The real uh, benefit of these is whoever's at the helm, uh, you can see because our helm station or pilot house is on the starboard side of the vessel, the port side is really your blind spot. And that becomes a pretty big deal when you're pulling into marinas or tight spaces if you're gonna dock in between boats or any fuel docks or any of that stuff. Um, if you're back, I haven't used this one um, a lot, but it's because we're on the East Coast um, and there isn't a lot, a lot of them, well, almost all of the marinas on the East Coast, none of them really have any actual boat slips that we can fit into. So we end up getting uh, end ties or uh, tied off at the T head on the outside, which is actually really easy for us to dock in. But when we get down into the Caribbean, um, there, most of those are, are uh, boat slips for uh, catamarans that you can back in. So I'll be using this one a lot. Right now, I've been using the one in the front and um, I could turn here, I'll show you how we turn them on. We're gonna go over to the video cameras. Uh, this is set for the forward. Let me show you the back camera real quick. So this is the aft cockpit. So again, this is, even though it's right below me, um, I, it's hard for me to see this, this uh, port transom uh, step area. So if we were docking on this side and Maki or one of the boys was going to step off, then um, I, it's, it's helpful for me to, to be able to see this this corner. Now the other side of it, oh, there's, there's Maki. Uh, so Maki's gonna go up to the front. Um, oh yeah, yeah, nice, very nice. We're not on a 737. <laughs> okay, so you can see Maki back there. So if we were docking, um, I could easily see her. Um, at times when there's a lot of wind, we do use headsets, but this, uh, the video allows me to see her hand signals um, and, and really easily see how close we are to the dock. Okay, if she goes up front now, I'll show you the front cam. Yeah, yeah, I could see, yeah, easy. Okay, so now going to the front. So, so far to date, I have used this uh, forward camera a lot because uh, I have used it when we're docking or pulling into fuel docks, but we use it, or I use it, all the time when we are anchoring. As you can see, I can easily see Maki. She's able to give me um, hand signals. There's a, a lot of times when she's dropping the anchor and if she's not, like look, so I could see her here, right? But if I look up, I 
I can't see her in front of the boat at all. And sometimes her hand signals are really hard to see. So it's a lot easier for me to see her here. Um, and I can see, well, yeah, I can see, I lower your hand a little bit. Yeah, so see, I could see her hand signals a lot easier here. She doesn't have to worry about having her hand up so high, trying to get it over the forward brow of the cockpit. Um, so these cameras, we do use them quite a bit. Um, like I said, we use them all the time when we're anchoring. We use them all the time when we are um, docking. I guess if I were to give a suggestion here is to not buy, not, to not have the factory install the forward one. Have a company like Just Catamarans install another one of these same cameras. However, have them do it up on the mast. It's just a, it's a bird's eye view. Uh, it's a little better than what we have, but what we have is, is really great and useful. But I think if I were to give somebody a suggestion, it would be get the aft cockpit one installed at the factory, get the forward one installed on the mast aftermarket. All right, so uh, we're gonna actually talk about the shore power cords, but before we get to that, I wanna just point out a very simple but ingenious little thing they have on Leopard catamarans. So you can see the entire aft cockpit here, right? It's a beautiful, huge space to have dining and entertain and have fun. The great thing is that if you're sitting back here and you wanna just look out the back of the boat, you wanna watch the kids swimming, you wanna fish, whatever, this thing simply pushes the other way and now you're completely facing aft. How cool is that? So this is a very large uh, storage locker here. Um, from the factory, what lives inside here is the life raft. Eight per on this boat, it's an eight person life raft. We have repositioned it. We'll show you that in a second. It's actually up on the roof right behind the, the uh, helm station. So um, we, we move, I should just say that we moved that life raft for two reasons. One, to open up all this great storage space under here. The second is that the way that it was positioned in here, um, the life rafts are pretty heavy. They're in a, a hard shell. It's a tethered system. Um, you would have, in an emergency, you would have to get that thing somehow out, up and out of here and get it off the back of the boat. The way it's set up up top, you just pull one click and you shove it off the roof and it goes in the water. Super easy, it's ready to go. Okay, so the aft storage bin here is huge. We have, we have bins in here. We have all kinds of things that we store. This space keeps getting reconfigured because at, at some point it, it gets used for snorkeling or diving equipment. Right now it's for fishing and a, a variety of other things. In here also lives our shore power cords. Now your shore power cords do come with the boat, but uh, on this boat, uh, because we're in the US, these are our 30 amp cords. There are two 30 amp cords. You can see the plugs right here. So uh, the receiving ends would get plugged in um, here. Now, when you go to, to the marina and you're gonna plug in on shore power at the pedestal, you have two options. You can either plug in these two 30 amp cords, or what we've done is we've gotten a pigtail um, adapter, which is this section right here, okay? Um, they get adapt, uh, um, plugged in here, and now this is a single 50 amp uh, cord. A lot easier uh, to plug in. We plug in once, and then you're able to actually provide power both to uh, what is split up on the boat is shore one and shore two. So shore one is the port side, shore two is the starboard side. Um, these pigtail um, power supplies actually have lights on them. So once you plug in your 50 amp cord uh, at the pedestal on, on the dock, these two lights light up blue, letting you know that power is flowing, uh, you have power, and then you would come in and, and turn on your shore power and your boat's active with electricity. I would recommend getting this because it just makes it a lot easier. The other thing is, as you can see, there's two cords and this can get a little sloppy. They make, uh, I say they, they make this sleeve. Now, boat, if this just unzips, you drop the two lines in here and you zip it up. And it, this not only protects the line, again, a little UV protection, but it makes it a lot easier. These things slide, this, this black um, sheathing slides, and it's a lot easier. These yellow cords are uh, heavy and they're um, a little rubbery, so it makes it uh, hard sometimes to pull it. Um, and you don't want to pull this across your boat. It's a, this is a lot kinder. The other thing uh, is that there are multiple Velcro spots. So once we've um, positioned the lines where we want them, you can Velcro this to anything on the boat so it keeps the line from falling in the water. So um, I would definitely recommend getting this.
let's go somewhere else on the boat. <laughs> <laughs>